Welcome back friends. Today we're going to do a little basic pistol maintenance and cleaning and we're going to use my Smith & Wesson model 686 357 revolver in stainless steel. I like to get all my stuff out and ready to go before I get started. Just makes things go a lot faster. I use two different cleaning rods here. One with the bore brush on it and one with the jag. I just like using the jag things go a lot quicker and plus I get 360 degree coverage when I go through the bore. We've got these very expensive uh, left-handed metric cleaning tools here also known as q-tips. I get the, my patches all laid out so I can just grab them one at a time. I don't need two hands to to pull them apart. I get them ready to go like that. A variety of brushes, old toothbrush, here's a bronze brush here, we're working on stainless steel, so this is going to be fine if I was working on one of my blue guns. I certainly want to, wouldn't want to use this on it. And then one of these uh, gunsmithing type brushes with the small end on the other side. You can get a, a three pack of these, I think, at Walmart or just about anywhere for three or four bucks. So those things work well too. Then you got to decide what lubricant or what solvent or cleaner are you going to use. Of course, everybody knows about Hoppy's number nine. Uh, it is a true solvent, so if you are going to use that, make sure you go back and get all the solvent out, and you're going to have to relube everything. But even though we're not going to use this today, we're going to open it up because we want to smell the. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're just going to have the smell of it going on over here, even though we're not going to use it. Another popular one out there that I use a lot too is Break Free CLP, cleaning, lubricating, and protecting all in one works great but for this particular cleaning we're going to use ballastol so any of these things will work for you uh, don't get off in the weeds about you know what's the best one just find one that works for you and and be done with it as far as oil uh, i use this militech you know rem oil's fine uh, outers hoppies whatever oil it's going to be good but there's not a whole lot of lubricating going on with one of these so uh, don't worry too much about that the other thing I do is uh, instead of dipping my brush back into this and getting it all contaminated, I just pour whatever I need into a small container like this and we just use it and don't have to worry about contaminating the rest of it. Have a couple blue rags around ready to go. Old rag here and let's go ahead and get started. Now with these Smith & Wessons, we can easily remove uh, the yoke here, also known as the crane, by just taking out one screw, and that's gonna be right here on this side. Now, I don't wanna see you taking one of these to that, or maybe this, or, you know, this, and certainly not this. Make sure you get the proper screwdriver that's going to fit this screw. These screws are very specific and I can't tell you the number of times I've picked up one of these guns at the gun show and said, oh man, that looks great. And it's, oh crap. You look over here and there's a big scratch. And that's because somebody used the wrong screwdriver and it didn't fit or they didn't take their time. So invest in a decent set of, of screwdrivers. You can get these just about anywhere. Bass Pro, put it on your Christmas wish list or birthday wish list. They're cheap. Your wife is always complaining. She can't doesn't ever know what to get you. Well, write this down and give this to her. So, and I always like to keep my finger on this so we don't slip and get a scratch. Come on out there. That. We'll clean that off, set it aside. And now what we can do is we can slip this entire thing off. Just makes it a little easier to clean. Took about an extra 15 seconds. So the first thing I'm going to do, we are going to go ahead and separate this. And I'm going to take my regular old toothbrush here, and we're going to clean around some of these, these items here and just get the, the residual dirt off that's on the top, on the surface. Because once you put your solvent, and for the purpose of this video, we're going to call ballastol a solvent. Because when you put your solvent on there and you've got a big pile of dirt already built up, then it just makes a, a big muddy mess. So just take a second, get all that 
top stuff off the top, get it out of the way. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and get started because this isn't going to take much work. I am then going to take my brush, a little ballast all here. Clean this area all underneath there, around the front. Going to take our brush, go through each one there. About three, get a little more on there. And we're just going to let that sit. I'm going to go back over to the frame here and get our brush. This is an area that really gets most of the problems with dirt. We're just going to get some. Get our ballast all in there and get it working. And we're going to take our, get our brush nice and saturated. Now you can do this with just putting a patch through there too and saturating it, but I just kind of skip that step because I got this brush pretty saturated so now everything is good and saturated in there with the uh, ballast all and we're just gonna let it sit and do its thing for a few minutes this gun is not extremely filthy but one thing about you want to look at in these uh, revolvers especially if you've got a 357 and you're shooting 38 and you're going back and forth between 38 and 357 Make sure you shoot your 357 ammo first at the range because if you shoot up a bunch of 38, what's going to happen is here's the shell. It only goes so far into the cylinder with the 350 uh, with a 38 special. So if you shoot up a bunch of that, you're going to have a a residual ring of debris inside the cylinder here. And then when you take a a 357 cartridge and try to put in it might not seat all the way because you've got a built up of, of dirt in there so if you do shoot 357 and 38 special make sure you shoot the 357 first because you won't have any problem with the 38 special going in there because it doesn't go in as far that's one of the things I've noticed with this now one other thing you'll see especially on these stainless guns on the end here you're just going to get this gas ring and that's just part of of a revolver and uh, I'm going to show you how to get that off here real quick so this has been sitting here a little bit let's go ahead and clean it up a little bit now I'm going to let that's that uh, solvent just sit in there kind of do its thing but you can take this brush and any kind of solvent you want and you can scrub this as much as you want and that's not going to come off Now you can take some steel wool. People have taken Dremels to it and everything. I think that's just crazy. You don't want to remove any of this metal here. This is a very uh, close tolerance here between here and the forcing cone. You don't want to remove any metal. But I'm going to show you something that will take that off really quick. And it is this. This is Birchwood Casey lead remover and polishing cloth. Now Hoppies makes one of these things, but it doesn't work. This one does. Now, uh, comes in a length of cloth about oh, 18 inches long, 18 by 12 probably, and I just cut off a piece and use it like this. It makes it a lot easier to do. And we don't lack for a couple things here in Texas. One is churches and the other one is gun stores. And I haven't found one of these in any gun store. So just save yourself a bunch of time, go to the internet and uh, spend seven or eight bucks, have them send you one of these. You can get it with free shipping. 
you're going to take this little piece here and all you have to do is rub on this a little bit. Now we're not going to do the whole thing because that'd be boring. But I'm going to show you just with very little effort. No steel wool. No secret chemicals. No Dremel tool. No flits or mother's polishing compound. Any of that stuff. See how it comes off here? Take a look at that, see if we can get it to focus. But that has just come right off real easy. So I'm not going to sit here and watch y'all or make y'all watch me do the whole thing. But let me get to work on that and we'll come back here in just a couple minutes and I'll show you the result. Okay, we're back. And I worked on this for, I don't know, maybe three minutes. Here's what's left. And let's see if we can get this to focus for you. I tell you what, that thing has just turned out like it was like it was brand new. Why well, won't it focus? There we go. But look at that. No secret solutions or anything like that. No wire brush or anything needed. Just get you some of that stuff there and, and you'll be good to go. Now the reason I did this first before cleaning out this cylinder is because I didn't want all that crap falling in there. We're going to go ahead and clean it out now. So we are going to make one more pass with our, our brush here. It's so much easier when this isn't on the on the frame. Okay, we're done with that. Sorry about the dogs. Like I said, I like Jags. They're just faster. Use both sides here. Patches are ready to go. I say they're ready to go. While we're at this stage, I'm going to go ahead and this thing looking pretty good. I want to this ejector rod clean. I'm going to make sure we have everything on this side good and clean underneath this star here. Stuff will gather up. Okay, so let me run some clean patches through that and then we'll get back to you. Okay, we've got the cylinder all clean, ready to go. We're just going to set it aside there. Next thing we're going to do is get this yoke all nice and clean, also known as the crane. Make sure we get, get all the dirt out of there. That's where that little screw rides. That's what holds it in. Remember that screw we had a while ago? Rides in there. It tends to get dirty. So that's looking pretty good. We'll put it back together and set it aside. I'm going to take a little bit of lube of your choice. And it doesn't take much on these revolvers. I just take a drop on my finger. That's about as much lube as that thing's going to get. Oh yeah, sounds good. And the same thing, like I say, not much. And that's it. As far as on uh, this rod, the same thing. You just don't need a lot of lubrication on these things. People tend to over oil this stuff and a lot of guys are gonna say that I'm over oiling. But I mean, I've just got a film here on my hands. Now if you're using a, a CLP, You've probably got enough lubricant just with the CLP to make this thing work. So, okay, got that done. We're gonna set it aside. Let's work on this frame. Now we've, uh, was pretty dirty. So we're gonna go ahead and get a little more ballast all on it. We're gonna go through this. Get 
do this barrel a couple times. Take a look, it's looking pretty good. Let me get some patches. Yep, that's dirty. Both sides. And we're just going to go through that until we can get get it good and clean. Didn't I say something earlier about having all your patches out and ready to go? That's my last patch. I'm going to have to stand up and get a couple more. But I think it's getting pretty clean. Yep, we're getting there. But see, that's what I like about a Jag. You get 360 degree coverage with the Jag all the way around. And you're not worried about folding the patch over and putting it on there. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now one area I was concerned about is this forcing cone here. It gets kind of dirty there. So I'm going to take my a bronze brush clean that off real good I actually should have done this first now I'm gonna have to put another patch through here yeah that came that came pretty clean take a patch try to get that in there and now since I just ran that brush there I probably want to put a patch back through there make sure that area is good and clean right there at the forcing cone and it is okay it's looking good I think we're about ready to put it back together. Now I want to get this uh, clean down here. Get some solvent down there. Yeah, that was pretty dirty. And just take your your expensive guns gun cleaning tool here. Make sure you get all that good and clean. Of course, you're buying these a thousand a time, you know. It's breaking the bank, so I'll make sure you use them all up really good. All right, it's looking good. We're gonna wipe it off. Yeah. You're not gonna believe the amount of oil or the lack thereof that these come with from the factory I've seen these guns that were 20 years old taken apart all the way down and uh, the guy wanted to lube it and he put it back together and he said didn't need it <laughs> it was working just fine there's not a whole lot to be done there okay Careful. Back in. Always put your cylinder back in by pushing on the crane. And darn sure don't be doing the old Hawaii 5 0 slapping the cylinder in there. Or I'll be slapping you in the head because that's not the way to do it. That's how you bend your crane or your yoke, whichever term you might want to use. Take our screwdriver, keep your finger down here to make sure it doesn't slip. Don't gorilla tighten this thing down like that. Just that's all it needs. Function. Functions well. Lockup is beautiful. 
Now, let's talk about some lubrication. I've seen guys that every time they clean their gun, they say, well, you know, I put a drop, my oil, I put a drop here, and I put a drop here, and then I put a drop in here. Well, let's say you go to the range, eh, I don't know, once a month. Clean your gun 12 times a year. Drop there, drop there. 24 drops of lube, right? Now, if you do that at the end of the year, that's how much lube you put in there. It's got to go somewhere, and it's probably going to be awful ugly when you pull these grips off and look down in there. Guys, they just don't need that much lubrication. They just don't. So I would suggest not doing this because that's, that's a lot of oil. But hey, if it works for you, you don't mind having a lot of grease all over the place, then you go ahead and do whatever you want. You know, people I've seen, they'll just take this and they're just dropping some oil down there. Not sure where it's going, but there's oil down there. And uh, it just, just doesn't need it. So there you are, folks. That's my quick and easy gun cleaning slash lubrication video on my Smith & Wesson Model 686. I hope I keyed you into something here for you guys that are working on stainless revolvers. Uh, let me warn you though, do not under any circumstances use this on a blue gun. It will take the blue right off. Consequently, you don't want this wire brush around your blue gun either. And if you want to know what's in here, the secret sauce that makes this work, you can go to the Birchwood Casey website. You can download the data sheet or just read it. They'll tell you what's in it. And uh, this is a slightly abrasive material and it works perfect. I highly recommend it. So until next time, you guys be safe and we hope to see you down the road. Adios.